Well, straight from the other realm, here we are. It is, uh, oh, give me time and date. It is yeah, Thursday, January 26. It's six hours and 41 minutes into the day, and we're coming to you right from within a, right after a dream. It does take me a few minutes to sort of lie there and sort of think about things, and this is where it comes into with sort of Aang and a number of the position of gurus, including bishops. Dreams are a bizarre thing. It's often, as you see in Aang and, and, uh, as presented, that these are the issues of a chakra. And that what happens is that these dreams, these issues within the dream, uh, are what's blocking the chakra, blocking the flow of the chakra. And they need to be aligned. And the way you, get, the way you align is by letting the dreams go, by, by not caring about them. But the problem is, as human beings, we do care about things. We have emotions. So it's not a matter of getting rid of the, the dreams, getting rid of the emotions, as it is understanding that cer certain issues are within you. You have certain emotions that you just simply, in many cases, can't control. And you're going to feel them, and you have to learn how to deal with them. And this is what the dreams that I've been having lately, uh, particularly last, uh, last few uh, minutes ago, and I spent most of Wednesday in bed dealing with, I had a, a good accomplishment over Tuesdays. But as the accomplishment, I said, as the accomplishment comes in, when you've had these accomplishments, when you've moved to a new level, a new series of problems, in many cases, old ones, present themselves. And this is where I begin sort of thinking about things. It's sort of that some of my emotions weren't necessarily about things in the past, but rather things in the future. And understanding that in mind, in the, 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 the dream state, there's no time. There's, it, you can have past, present, and future all mixed into one, oh, I'm going to call it an episode. It's like, it's, like, it's like a TV show. You have these episodes where you're in these different TV shows. I, said, I watch TV. When I, immer when I watch TV, I'm immersed in the show. I become part of whatever whatever episode is going on. Same thing that's sort of Kim Possible with uh, um, uh, Codename Kim is Next Door. Any of the shows that I really do enjoy, even the shows I don't enjoy, I do get immersed. And that's part of the problem is that the, the shows I don't enjoy which is a lot of violence and stuff like that, I do personally get involved. I get immersed within the show. And I feel a lot of the emotions that are supposed to be felt during it, and I don't like that feeling. And so I typically stick with cartoons and kids' shows because the feeling, the emotions that are within the kids' shows are, are, are something that I find, not necessarily entertain, but I find them enjoyable. And so it gives me a way to sort of manage my emotions uh, as compared to being wild and out there and having my emotions stoked and, and, and uh, fueled. And this is sort of the, the, the case with uh, the dreams that were occurring last night. They, occur, they occurred around, around emotions of myself or how I see myself. And different behaviors and a mixed mix the past, the present, and the behavior, the uh, past, present, and future all together. But it, it, it brought ho forward an understanding, a behavior that I didn't have before. And it's getting me closer and closer to the neutral jinn. The neutral jinn, the new, or the neutral jing, however we want to there's two pronunciations for the word jinn. There's jinn and there's jing. Uh, they can be used back and forth. A lot of times, languages will have different dialects, and 
So for say, the same word will have the same will have different pronunciations. So there's no particular issue with the with the pronunciation. Oh. And I began to realize as I woke up sitting there lying there talking, thinking about things, that the understanding of the chakra and the alignment of the chakra, getting rid of your emotions, getting rid of that, that, of that issue, is not, it isn't real. You have to understand the emotion. You have to understand what it is. You have to understand what your feelings are. And then find a, just like you're finding a path to anywhere or find a path on the, uh, as a practitioner to neutral gen or to the spiritual goal of, uh, of Dharma then you have to find a solution for this you have to find a solution to the emotion and that is a path that is a journey on its own so that's what I'm saying you, you have a path to say the Dharmic existence of, of selflessness well how do you get there well there's no particular road map to this then a lot of times you have to go off on these side journeys in order to get there. And one of the side journeys is dealing with uh, what your emotions are. You can't get rid of the emotions. Uh, a lot of times when you, oh, I, you think you get rid of the emotions, but then you, they, then you see all these protests in the streets. And these people always use, a, they, they, they use the term woke. They're not woke. They're simply woke into a new world. People... There are different worlds, different spheres, different planets, if you will. And so they woke from one planet to another. They haven't woken completely. They haven't gone through the journey yet. And most of them will never wake fully. They'll wake to one position or another, but they won't wake. They won't wake fully. The, my goal here is to wake fully to get to the end. To stand outside of almost everything, to get as close to transcendence as I possibly can. Now, transcendence is again is not a physical thing. Even when we talk about transcendence, there is no linear path. Just why you know they talk about the chakras. Well, and they they have the, the lotus pose, and they talk they talk about going from the base on up to the head. Well, there is no physical sense in terms of the chakra. There is a physiological impact on things. And this is why you have, in addition to the prayer meditation, you have other various different physical uh, condition, physical, physical conditioning uh, meditations. And I'm doing the next one. I've increased some of the, 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 the physical conditioning mecha, me, uh, uh, meditations using some of the techniques I had learned earlier. Even during prayer, because prayer can be, depending on how long you do it, can be very difficult to go through. And you have to learn various different methods and techniques in order to get through it. And this has to do with, with the aches and pains of the body. There's, there has a, there, there's a number of different issues. The more quiet and still you, you become, the more you have to itch, the more you, there are issues of taking a deep breath. Sometimes you feel claustrophobic. And there are a number of issues that you have to deal with in terms of the physiology, so there are physiological, just uh, uh, there are prayer meditations for the, for the for the soul. There are physiological meditations that help you achieve uh, that sense of continuous meditation. This is talking about the monks who will garden and farm uh, while doing their prayers, doing the prayer meditation. They make this, they make the environment around them part of the meditation. And it, it, it is, again, it's not something you achieve immediately, nor is it something you achieve completely. It's only in part. So the journey is always there. It just depends on how, uh, whether or not you, you if, you're, if you're continuing down the path. Sometimes you stop to take a rest and that's it. There is no more, more for you. Uh, and... One of the uh, distractions that will stop you is uh, <clears throat> praise and, 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 and verification of your self-worth. You know, oh, you're a great person. You're worth it. Always think positive. 
Well, this is a trap for a person who's going to be dharmic and selfless. That's a trap. And it stops you from taking the journey. Because there are many cases where you like the praise so much that you don't feel like going back to the struggle of the journey. The journey is always a struggle. It's always going to be a push forward. And that's why in many cases the, the pandemic situation is kind of a blessing. Because it's a struggle. It's a hard struggle. It's not, not an easy struggle. But it is a need to struggle. It's something that you can work through. Now, do I say that this is God's will and God's punishing people? No. I mean, the argument between God and, 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 and the demons in hell is the demons in hell, if you read enough of the, uh, the literature, the different do uh, the, uh, the documents that you find in these archives and so on and so forth, and even though I can't necessarily speak a particular language, uh, you, w because you're doing research, you can take an enormous amount of time to study the word, to, to, to really get a better understanding for things than you would uh, if you were speaking, because you've got the time, you could spend six months on a sentence, and it's no particular problem. And the thing is, is that in this sense, in this studying, you begin to realize that the demons, in their argument, oh wow, look, look, look at what God has allowed to happen, you know, you know, and they have this sort of that they, where they blame heaven for what's going on in hell. Well, no, because hell created its own situation. It did heaven didn't do anything to create hell. Hell created itself. It, what happened is that in the nature of free will, because the demons are given free will, you, stand, you, you, you try to avoid it, you try to talk the person out of it, but if a person's, uh, I mean, this, this is dealing with an, an alcoholic and dr or a drug addict. Oh, no, no, I can stop any time I want to. And the, the results of that, I can stop any time I want to, is often very tragic. Because the person ends up in a very bad situation. And you have to have, they have to have enough sense. Oh, no, no sense. That's not a sense because there's nothing logical. This is emotional. One of the blockages that will prevent people from getting help, particularly the drug addict or, or, the, uh, or the alcoholic, is their sense of pride. If they've been lectured a lot, it's hard, it's hard not to, 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 to say, you know, you shouldn't have been doing this. That's a very difficult thing to, to not say. But what happens, do they have enough sense of humility to put aside their pride and say, yeah, I screwed up, but I'm going to go back and ask for help. You know, the other thing, when you make a mistake, can you go back and ask for help? This is, this is your own capacity. Can you do this? Are you willing to say, okay, you know what, I messed up. I have a mistake. I, I made a mistake. I need some help. Could you do that? Could you put your own self, sense of self, your own sense of, sense of pride aside and ask for help? This is the blockage for most uh, drug addicts and most alcoholics. This is the same thing with gambling addiction. Do you have enough self-control? Do you have a way to put your own pride aside and say, okay, look, I've made a mistake. Uh, let's get some help. Now, the help may not always be what you want it to be, because again, if you're expecting somebody to pull you out of your addiction, that's not going to happen. You created the hell that you're in, and now you have to dismantle it. Someone can help you dismantle it. They could be there to, to sort of to listen to your issues, to help you uh, go through things. But they can't take the hell away from you. Only God can have, only God does that. Only God can take away the hell by being merciful, saying, okay, yeah, okay, you messed up, let's get rid of this. Right? The past is the past, let's, let's deal with what's now and what's going to be in the future. That's forgiveness. But the other thing is, you have, in order to prevent the hell from occurring again, because things can be wiped away as much as you want, to prevent the hell from occurring again, you need to understand what your personality is. What, and you need to sort of take that step in terms of the Dharma step and being as selfless as you possibly can. That's humility. Pride is what, is, is what brings in a large chunk of the fall. A large, this is where anger comes in. This is where jealousy comes in. 
hatred comes in, it's all from a sense of self. And this is what you see in, in most of the Republicans. They say, oh, we're Christians. Well, are you following the Dharmic path? This is in terms of the Eastern Christian understanding. And the answer is no. Why? Because look at what they look at how they're talking about the the immigrants. It doesn't matter whether an immigrant is legal or illegal. There should be no illegal or there should be no illegal alien. And in terms of there shouldn't be a law to prevent people from living where they want to live. If they can afford to live and they, they're willing to go through whatever they need to go through to get to a particular place, you know, okay, that's fine. But what happens is, when you're listening to a conservative, and this will say, I'm not a conservative, I'm not a Republican, I'm an independent. When you listen to a conservative talk about the immigration issue, as well, they're taking my job from me. Well, you're already employed. Yeah, but I could have had a better job. They're taking my education away from me. Well, you could have had that education. You just didn't want to. They just didn't want to. Mom well, was too busy, you know. I had all these other things to do. Well, it was there for you. You just simply chose not to. But again, they're arguing from a position of self. They're arguing on a selfish level. Let's go to the left now. And watching and reading through some of the stuff on Instagram. What do you see? You're seeing the same selfishness you see on the right, the religious right. Because it's... But also there is a religious left. So the religious are on both sides, left and right. The belief is in two totally different things. And the left, uh, once again, assumes their position to be the superior position that don't understand and become intolerant of those who have different views. And that's what you're seeing that's what you saw with the election of Biden. These are people who were intolerant. They're taught to be intolerant. They don't understand they're not fully woke. They're simply on another planet. They, uh, they have no clue or understanding of the history of wh what the religion that they're attached to. And so what happens, they're easy, they become tools of the establishment. And this is what I posted on, on, on Instagram. That's, you can sort of see that. that the left, the protests, the pro and the protesters have become tools of the establishment on either side, left and right, because the establishment is on, on all sides. And this is the Hege Hegelian dialectic. There to create the conflict between left and right, and from the conflict, from the ashes of the conflict, this is what you see, the burning of the cities, you have progress. Progress is the phoenix that rises from the ashes of the old. This is the whole understanding of this. You think it's atheistic? Guess again. Because Phoenix is a god. Phoenix is a tool of a god. Uh, it, and in terms of some cases, a demigod, it's spirit that does destruction. And then from the destruction, you get the rebirth. And this is the nature of the way the world works today. But it's, again, it's not understood. And it's, but it's all done from the position of self. It's all about status. What you're worth, you are worth it, and you got to be careful with phrases like that. What you are worth it, and self affirmation, positive answer, positive affirmation. This is a trap. This is what stops you from going along the journey. This is what stops drug addicts and alcoholics from getting help, or any any former addict. This is the reality of it. And this is sort of the nature of what my dreams are. The nature of my life is that. You fall along these paths, and it takes a long time to get where you're going because it's in bits and pieces all over the place. And it's interesting when you can have a conversation with somebody else to see how they're feeling and how they're thinking. Because some of the times you'll say something, they'll go, "Oh no, that's not real." And then they'll come across, they'll come across, and that's what I had last night. Someone sent me an email, and what was it? It was something I had been talking about for a couple of years. But the person didn't believe it. So no, that can't be true. You can't. You, you, the, the, the the Catholic Church and the Protestant they can't be pagans. They're, they're pagans. No, that can't be. They may have fallen into problems. But they're not pagans. And they found a book published 
on the Cambridge book site, there's a research site, they found a paper in a book published talking about the uh, uh, Kabbalistic origins of the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, and the papacy. Kabbalism is paganism. It's the origin of the Freemasons. And the thing is, the way Kabbalism works is that, that oh, it's all Kabbalism. Well, no, it's not. Well, you can say it's all Kabbalism, but it's not one thing. Kabbalism has different views, interpretations, and so on and so forth. They're just like in any Eastern Eastern understanding of of spirituality, the metaphysics, this is the same thing with Kabbalism. There's a lot of different interpretations and understanding because, because and understanding because there's a lot of experiences out there. People have different experiences, and a large chunk of these things are based on these experiences. And so, you, if one, per, I have one one experience, someone else has another experience. We're going to have two two different views. But that's why you go out and look for other perspectives. Because I have my perspective, and someone else has theirs. You want to understand what, what's their perspective. You want to see through their eyes. And this is what happens in some, in, in, in many of the cases, in my dreams, I see through other people. I'm not having my dream. I'm having somebody else's dream. I'm living somebody else's life. It's not a past life. It's my experience through somebody else's eyes. Again, it depends on how you interpret things. But otherwise, if it was a past life, or I'm a woman and on the inside, well, I dreamed I was SpongeBob. Am I also SpongeBob? Was I SpongeBob in a past life? 